We end here tonight with a sleeping giant, an ancient super volcano beneath Yellowstone National Park. It has been snoring for thousands of years, exhaling through the park's famous geysers. Yellowstone National Park, an underground super volcano, is drawing visitors, hoping for a different kind of eruption. A geyser that, you, that is usually dormant has shot off over and over again. Have you ever felt a rush of excitement at the thought of a giant waking up? Now, imagine if I told you that the giant beneath Yellowstone, a supervolcano capable of changing our world, is starting to stir. Alarming signs have led authorities to declare an emergency evacuation. In recent weeks, Yellowstone has experienced increased seismic activity and dramatic geothermal changes. Scientists and observers are worried that the dormant behemoth beneath this national treasure might soon awaken. The ground is swelling, geysers are erupting more frequently, and the whole region is on high alert. This has led to drastic emergency evacuation measures. But what is causing this urgent response, and how serious is the threat? Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today, we'll explore the unfolding crisis at Yellowstone National Park. With recent events echoing scientists' warnings, we must ask, are we on the brink of a massive supervolcano eruption? Join us as we dive into the facts and potential global impact. Imagine standing at the edge of Yellowstone National Park, surrounded by its breathtaking beauty and geothermal wonders. But beneath this serene facade lies a looming threat, an imminent eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. The official people had noticed the disturbing signs of the imminent eruption of a supervolcano, and now members of the official team are ordering for an immediate evacuation at Yellowstone. The previous weeks have been very restive, full of aversion due to a continued seismic burst and an uncommon geothermal change. The surface is swelling, the geysers erupting much too often. Dread of the whole region is in concussion. The Yellowstone supervolcano is one of the most massive and potent in the world, a toast of scientific study and a wonder to the public. Its last Big Bang occurred around 640,000 years ago and covered most of North America with ash, changing the global climate. Now, a series of warning signs point to the fact that the supervolcano might erupt once more, and scientists are keeping a close eye on the activity. These take in more earthquakes, ground deformation, and possibly hydrothermal changes. The possible consequences of an eruption are staggering, running from large-scale destruction in the immediate area to severe disruptions of the weather all over the Earth. This is a precautionary evacuation meant to provide for the safety of the region's residents and visitors. Thousands of them are being coordinated to access evacuation, relocation, and emergency shelter where a volcanic eruption has forced thousands of residents to flee their homes, conditions are worsening. Officials say that the island looks like a battle zone. And getting information regarding the evacuation routes and how to stay safe. This uncertainty of timing and eruptive magnitude is the reason behind the decision that evacuations should be made. This event, unfolding at Yellowstone, is a grim reminder of forces in nature and the need to be ready. As scientists continue to analyze data and refine their predictions, the world watches with bated breath, hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. Walk with me and talk with me as we discuss scientific facts on a Yellowstone supervolcano eruption and its likely global impact, the caution of evacuation, and monumental efforts to ensure the public's safety in the case of that looming natural disaster. Signs of an impending eruption The scenarios pointing forward to an expected eruption at Yellowstone are taking shape, and they are now more scary. The most significant is the increased seismic activity, which has proved this mostly in the recent times due to the evidence found. Seismologists have recorded hundreds of tiny earthquakes in the area, behavior which has always preceded volcanic eruptions in the site. Additionally, marked ground deformation where there is uplift and subsidence of land of the caldera has been cited by scientists. This ground breathing could just be an indication of the movement of magma beneath the Earth's crust. 
Geysers throughout the park are more active, erupting very frequently and in spurts. The water temperatures in the hot springs are increasing, meaning more of the geothermal features in the park could go high. Such changes relate to a huge shift in the subterranean plumbing, probably driven by increasing volcanic activity. High levels of gas emissions, including sulfur dioxide, have been reported, and these are strongly indicative that magma is rising underneath. All these pieces of evidence combined indicate that there is an increased threat of eruption. Predicting these changes as they occur, scientist methods on high-tech monitoring is basically on the tracking itself. But the very time when the eruption would take place seemed rather impossible and its intensity. Nonetheless, the clustering of these indicators has made critically important the time of carrying out an evacuation to secure the lives and get ready for the potential effect of an eruption from a Yellowstone supervolcano. Official Warnings and Evacuation Order Amidst these unsettling signs, YVO and U.S. geological officials are now giving highly urgent warnings to evacuate areas surrounding Yellowstone National Park. The USGS and YVO have elevated the warning level to a warning level called Vigilance Level, indicating an impending eruption. The determination is structured on sound modeling and an evaluation of seismic data, ground deformation patterns, and increased geothermal activity, which are all pointing to an increased volcanic unrest. All residents and visitors are being told that there is a risk. A large public information campaign is in progress. Emergency services are on high alert. Local government offices are coordinating a compulsory orderly and safe evacuation of tens of thousands of people. Today, we've been telling you about this alarming, apparently, new research that shows a Yellowstone National Park supervolcano might erupt sooner than thought and it could um, wipe out life on the planet. And shelter and refuge in other states have been arranged. National Guard and other military units have been mobilized to work on the task of evacuation and control of order. Other than working on evacuating people, scientists have located state-of-the-art monitoring equipment continually and at strategic areas towards determining other future trends. They are using drones and satellite technology that will deliver real-time data and footage to estimate more accurately the timing and size of the eruption. The evacuation order is an anticipatory action to prevent any kind of risk to human life. Though nobody can predict the timing of any such eruption, it seems that the signs are only indicating that they must be cautious at this time. The message from officials is that everyone must obey the order to evacuate and keep looking at official news for further instruction. The busted puddle of burning magma is meant to save the potential lives at risk if the anticipated Yellowstone supervolcano were to happen. Logistics of the Evacuation the Yellowstone evacuation has been a giant logistical provision and operation that involves the coordination of many agencies. With a likely catastrophic eruption, officials are concerned with planning an efficient, hassle-free movement of residents and visitors away from that danger zone. Teams establish the evacuation routes and centers that are identified by proper signage and enhanced through the use of roadblocks and traffic controls. There are local and state police, with the help of backing from National Guard units, strategically located in the same routes, who will engage effectively in traffic control and the provision of offer help in areas of need. In the event that civilians cannot drive or do not have vehicles at all, buses and other forms of transport should be available to ensure no one is left behind. They have installed shelters in those schools, community centers, and sports arenas in neighboring states, fully equipped with the ability to host numerous evacuees. Inside, they offer different kinds of basic needs, such as food, water, medical support, and psychological support. Regarding the fact that evacuation is a menace of great stress and anxiety. Volunteers from the Red Cross and others are there to see to further support and resources. As an anticipation of this possible evacuation, the authorities have done community meetings and information diffusion in different media so the public can be abreast of the information on evacuation plans, routes, and safety. 
the breaking news on local news through social media and the emergency alert system will also be utilized in relaying the needed updates. There are special arrangements for more vulnerable populations, which would include elderly, disabled, and people with medical conditions. Medical transport services and facilities are mounted to give them healthcare services during the evacuation process. The well-defined comprehensive evacuation strategy must be carried out effectively to avoid panic, so that people caught at the scene are transferred to a safe place without major inconveniences. Hopefully, this will be done through dedication and commitment by emergency services and government agencies in the face of the natural disaster. Understanding Yellowstone's Supervolcano Yellowstone National Park harbors one of the most enormous volcanic systems in the world. Unlike ordinary single-peak volcanic structures, the Yellowstone supervolcano spreads under a large caldera, a depression created after past enormous eruptions. Under quite a considerable part of the park, this supervolcano is the source of geothermal features, among them geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles. Below Trump's feet, is a massive magma chamber which sits under pressure upon molten rock. Yellowstone supervolcano accounts for three enormous eruptions in a 2.1 million time frame, and the most recent occurred roughly 640,000 years ago. That would have been thousands of times larger if its eruptions were more massive compared to the Mount St. Helens one of 1980, which altered the shape of the land whose effects are felt through drastic alteration of many of the world's climate patterns. Scientists closely monitor the Yellowstone supervolcano with devices like seismographs, ground deformation measurements, and gas emission analyses to check for any signs of volcanic activity. The response will be extremely crucial if the volcano shows signs of heightened seismic activity or ground uplift in combination with alteration of the geothermal features. These were the kinds of signals that caused the current evacuation attempts, although it was still considered preventive. An erupting Yellowstone supervolcano would just be devastating. Pyroclastic flows and ash fall would obliterate everything in the immediate area, and the ash would be injected into the stratosphere, blocking out air traffic and continued global climate disruption. Crop failures and water pollution may lead to mass famines and droughts, which precisely underscores the necessity for preparation and successful response plans. Understanding the nature and behavior of the Yellowstone supervolcano is fundamental for the development of mitigation measures to ensure public safety. Continued research and monitoring efforts are leading us to ever-improving predictions and our ability to respond to volcanic hazards, and they demand ongoing vigilance and preparedness. The science behind super eruptions. One of the world's largest volcanoes is gearing up to explode. It's known as the Yellowstone Volcano. And it's not just any regular volcano. Nope, it's a super volcano. Some complex geological processes control super eruptions, like those from the Yellowstone Super Volcano. Super eruptions are very unusual but very powerful events that release more than 1,000 cubic kilometer of volcanic material, much greater than that of the normal volcanic eruptions, and they resettle landscapes and impact planetary climates. At the very heart of a super eruption is the huge magma chamber, namely a reserve of molten rock under the Earth's crust. This is what happens at the Yellowstone volcano. An extraordinary chamber filled with very hot semi-molten rock building up pressure over centuries to millions of years and as magma rises gases are released building up pressure in the chamber until a sudden explosion probably the most critical factors with super eruptions are those dealing with magma viscosity and gas content higher viscosity magma retains more gas therefore developing a higher pressure and creating a more explosive eruption. In addition, the strength of the surrounding rock determines the rate at which magma will easily escape. Scientists use equipment like seismographs, devices that detect earthquakes caused by moving magma, 
measurements of ground deformation that show changes at the surface, and monitors that track gas emissions to warn of rising magma. The dynamic science behind super eruptions resonates with the interplay between geology, chemistry, and physics in understanding and predicting such events. But with progressing research, scientists should come up with ever-improving predictive models to mitigate the effects of super eruptions and protect communities worldwide. Global Impact of a Yellowstone Eruption Even besides the direct impact and devastation, the global effects of a Yellowstone super eruption would be immeasurable. The vast amounts of ash and gases released will completely alter the global atmosphere and, in turn, influence the global climate as well as societies across the entire world. Of special importance is the winter effect that would be caused through the great input of sulfur dioxides into the stratosphere. These sulfuric aerosols would reflect sunlight away from Earth, and consequently, a very severe drop in temperature would ensue across the globe. This rapid cooling, were it to be severe enough, could conceivably last for years, ushering in a large-scale failure of crops and food shortage from the shortening of growing seasons and less agriculture productivity. Economic problems would, therefore, be grave in countries that are highly dependent on agriculture. Food prices would get through the roof, while hunger and malnutrition could rise, potentially in already vulnerable regions. The ash cloud would also be a major impendence to air travel, resulting in flight cancellations and groundings of aircraft at several continents. The monetary losses in aviation and world trade would be very huge due to the massive economic blow by interruption of the supply chain. It would also harm the ecosystems. The ashfall would destroy the forests, contaminate the water sources, and alter the habitats, eventually causing a loss of biodiversity. Marine ecosystems would be disturbed due to the alteration of temperature and acidity in the oceans affecting fisheries and people's livelihoods. The social impact would be staggering. Countries would have to cope with the flow of refugees escaping from areas impacted by the eruption, while humanitarian assistance and reconstruction efforts must involve cooperative international action. But the worst cost of such a catastrophe would be the traumatic psychological impact on people across the world, who would be gripped by fear and a sense of vulnerability following the eruption. Preparedness and Response Measures with such an event as the catastrophic destruction that would arise from a Yellowstone super-eruption, preparedness and response mechanisms are very instrumental in reducing the loss of life and emboldening society against the greater impacts. In-depth coordination across governments, international agencies, and local communities is needed that includes pre-eruption planning, early warning, a process for evacuation, and recovery activities following an eruption. This would signal the population early that volcanic activity is starting. There would be continuous measurements on seismic activity, ground deformation, and gas emissions, with state-of-the-art early warning. Advanced modeling techniques for predicting ash cloud transportation and dispersion may be used to trigger evacuation orders, including logistical preparations. Activities like this should be planned with extreme and careful attention to execution. Safe zones should be identified, evacuation routes should be drafted, and the communities at risk should continue to practice evacuation drills for their preparedness. The latest information on evacuation routes, shelter locations, and safety procedures is conveyed in the public through mass media and digital platforms. Humanitarian, infrastructure rehabilitation, and economic recovery would be the key activities embarked on in post-eruption response strategies. International action would have to provide vanguard distribution of emergency relief supplies, medical assistance, and temporary accommodation of affected people. A rapid needs assessment team would carry out an immediate evaluation of critical infrastructure such as roads, utilities, and communication networks for damage in order to facilitate immediate initial repairs and restoration work. Long-term recovery plans would also focus on the rebuilding of communities and agro-productivity concerning the revitalization of local economies. 
the investment in resilient infrastructure and disaster-resistant building codes would advantage the preparedness for the next volcanic event. Public education and community engagement would also be important components of preparedness strategies. Information on volcanic risk, emergency procedures, and personal preparedness measures would empower the public in taking proactive steps to protect themselves and their families during volcanic emergencies. In a nutshell, what really makes preparedness and response effective strategies towards disasters is proactive planning, strong communication, and collaboration from the whole of government down to the society level. With greater resilience and readiness, communities can be more resistant to the next catastrophe from a Yellowstone super eruption and build a safer future. In short, evacuating Yellowstone before a possible eruption shows how science and planning can prevent disaster. It saves lives by using early warnings and readiness plans. Thinking about a Yellowstone eruption is scary, but being prepared is practical and smart. It shows we're ready for the worst. That's all for this video. We hope you have enjoyed this video a lot. What do you think about a preemptive evacuation strategy for Yellowstone? Discuss your opinions in the comments section below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon for more interesting videos like this. Thank you for watching our video. The steep hillsides giving way to the force of water. Whoa. And the massive boulders narrowly missing cars on the road. Oh, it just moved. Flood swollen rivers even sweeping away buildings. And earthquake swarms are somewhat common around Yellowstone. The largest swarm was beneath Yellowstone Lake. One of the world's most mesmerizing natural wonders, Yellowstone National Park, famous for its amazing hot springs and beautiful scenery, has recently had a lot more earthquakes than usual. This has made people worried about the chance of a big volcanic eruption from one of North America's largest supervolcanoes. These earthquakes show how active and unpredictable the park can be, shaped by a huge volcanic crater formed by massive eruptions long ago. Even though these earthquake swarms are normal for Yellowstone, the recent increase in their number and strength has caught the attention of scientists and visitors. But what does this mean for Yellowstone's future? Let's explore. Yellowstone National Park, a jewel of the American landscape, sits atop one of the most significant geothermal areas in the world. The park is renowned for its geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles, which are all manifestations of the intense geothermal activity below the surface. This geothermal activity is driven by the Yellowstone Caldera, a massive volcanic crater formed by ancient cataclysmic eruptions. Understanding the geothermal and seismic background of Yellowstone is crucial for comprehending the forces that shape this dynamic region. The geothermal features of Yellowstone are powered by a magma chamber lying a few miles beneath the surface. This chamber, which is partially molten rock, heats groundwater that seeps down from the surface. As the water is heated, it rises back to the surface, resulting in spectacular geothermal phenomena. Geysers like Old Faithful and Hot Springs, such as the Grand Prismatic Spring, are iconic examples of this process. These features are not only beautiful, but also provide scientists with valuable data about the underlying geothermal systems. Seismic activity in Yellowstone is closely linked to its geothermal features. Earthquakes in the park are primarily driven by the movement of hydrothermal fluids and the shifting of the Earth's crust. The region experiences frequent earthquake swarms, which are clusters of small to moderate earthquakes occurring over a short period in a localized area. These swarms are part of the natural geological processes at Yellowstone and are monitored closely by scientists. One notable example of an earthquake swarm in Yellowstone is the Maple Creek Swarm, which began in June 2017 and continued for several months. Say July was a really shaky month at Yellowstone National Park. The U.S. Geological Survey shared its monthly report on earthquake activity Monday. During this period, over 2,475 earthquakes were recorded. While such swarms can be alarming to the public, they are not uncommon in Yellowstone. In fact, the park experiences between 1,500 to 2,500 earthquakes annually, with some years seeing even higher numbers. These earthquakes help release built-up pressure within the Earth's crust and hydrothermal systems, 
reducing the likelihood of a larger, more destructive event. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, plays a crucial role in monitoring the park's geothermal and seismic activity. Established in 2001, the YVO operates a network of seismographs, GPS stations, and other monitoring equipment throughout the park. This extensive monitoring allows scientists to track earthquake activity, ground deformation, and changes in geothermal features in real time. By analyzing this data, researchers can better understand the underlying processes and assess potential risks. While the idea of a catastrophic volcanic eruption at Yellowstone often captures public imagination, scientists emphasize that such an event is unlikely in the near future. The current geothermal and seismic activity, while significant, does not indicate an imminent eruption. Instead, it reflects the ongoing geological processes that have been shaping Yellowstone for millions of years. These processes, although dynamic and sometimes dramatic, are a natural part of the park's environment. In addition to its scientific importance, Yellowstone's geothermal and seismic activity enhances the park's natural beauty and draws millions of visitors each year. Nearly 200 earthquakes were recorded in Yellowstone National Park in the past two weeks. 20 earthquakes were detected Sunday that were higher than a 1.0 on the Richter scale. The geysers, hot springs, and other geothermal features are major attractions, offering a unique glimpse into the powerful forces at work beneath the Earth's surface. Visitors can safely enjoy these wonders thanks to the park's management which enforces strict safety measures and provides educational resources about the risks and marvels of Yellowstone's geothermal landscape. Earthquake swarms are clusters of seismic events occurring in a specific area within a relatively short period. While these swarms can be alarming, they are not necessarily indicative of an imminent volcanic eruption or major earthquake. Understanding the causes behind earthquake swarms is crucial for assessing their potential impact and mitigating associated risks, particularly in regions with volcanic activity like Yellowstone National Park. In Yellowstone, earthquake swarms are a common occurrence, with thousands of small earthquakes recorded each year. These swarms are typically associated with the movement of hydrothermal fluids beneath the Earth's surface. Yellowstone's extensive hydrothermal system, fueled by the heat from the underlying magma chamber, plays a significant role in inducing seismic activity in the region. The movement of hydrothermal fluids can trigger earthquakes through several mechanisms. One such mechanism is the pressurization of existing faults and fractures by the influx of hot water and steam. As these fluids migrate through the subsurface, they exert pressure on surrounding rocks, causing them to slip along fault lines and generate seismic events. Additionally, the rapid expansion and contraction of rock formations in response to temperature changes induced by the hydrothermal activity can also contribute to seismicity. This phenomenon, known as thermal stressing, can weaken the integrity of rock formations, making them more susceptible to fracturing and faulting. Another factor contributing to earthquake swarms in Yellowstone is the interaction between hydrothermal fluids and the surrounding rock matrix. The dissolution of minerals and alteration of rock properties by acidic fluids can create pathways for fluid migration and induce stress accumulation in the subsurface. Eventually, this stress buildup can exceed the strength of the surrounding rocks, leading to the release of seismic energy in the form of earthquakes. While hydrothermal activity is a primary driver of earthquake swarms in Yellowstone, tectonic stresses associated with the region's geological setting also play a significant role. Yellowstone is located in a tectonically active region known as the Intermountain Seismic Belt, where the North American plate is gradually moving westward relative to the Pacific plate. This ongoing tectonic activity generates stress along fault lines, which can interact with the hydrothermal system and trigger seismic events. In addition to natural processes, human activities such as geothermal energy extraction and reservoir impoundment can also induce earthquake swarms in volcanic regions like Yellowstone. The injection or withdrawal of fluids from subsurface reservoirs can alter the pressure distribution within the Earth's crust potentially destabilizing fault lines and triggering seismic activity. 
at Yellowstone National Park. The U.S. Geological Survey shared its monthly report on earthquake activity yesterday. There were more than 1,000 earthquakes around Yellowstone for the month of July. Despite the prevalence of earthquake swarms in Yellowstone, the vast majority of these events are relatively small and pose minimal risk to the safety of visitors and surrounding communities. However, monitoring and research efforts are essential for identifying patterns and trends in seismic activity, which can help inform hazard mitigation strategies and emergency response plans. Earthquake swarms in Yellowstone are a natural consequence of the region's complex geological and hydrothermal processes. While these swarms can be unsettling, they are typically not cause for immediate concern regarding volcanic eruption or major earthquake. By understanding the causes behind earthquake swarms and monitoring their occurrence, scientists can better assess potential hazards and mitigate risks in volcanic regions like Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone National Park, renowned for its breathtaking geothermal features, is also a hotspot for seismic activity. The park's location atop a massive volcanic caldera and its complex geological makeup contribute to frequent earthquakes, some of which have left significant marks on its history. Understanding these major earthquakes and their historical context is essential for grasping the dynamic nature of Yellowstone's landscape and the ongoing risks it presents. One of the most significant earthquakes in Yellowstone's recorded history is the Hebgen Lake earthquake of August 17, 1959. Although it occurred just outside the park's western boundary in Montana, this magnitude 7.3 quake had profound effects on Yellowstone. The Hebgen Lake earthquake was one of the strongest tremors to hit the region, causing massive landslides, creating new faults, and resulting in the tragic loss of 28 lives. The earthquake also formed Quake Lake, a new body of water created by a landslide that dammed the Madison River. This event dramatically demonstrated the potential for significant seismic activity in the Yellowstone area and the associated hazards. The Hebgen Lake earthquake also caused noticeable changes within Yellowstone itself. Geysers and hot springs experienced alterations in their activity, with some becoming more active and others less so. These hydrothermal changes underscored the close relationship between seismic events and geothermal features in the park. It happened just west of Yellowstone National Park along the Madison River. MTN's John Shear explains how the massive 7.3 quake took lives and changed the landscape. The earthquake also heightened awareness and concern about the potential for future large seismic events in the region, spurring increased scientific interest and monitoring efforts. Going further back, historical records indicate that significant earthquakes have shaped the Yellowstone landscape over millennia. For instance, geological evidence suggests that a major earthquake around 6,500 years ago caused substantial uplift and subsidence in the Yellowstone Plateau. This event likely contributed to the current geothermal features seen today, demonstrating how seismic activity has played a crucial role in the park's geological evolution. More recent significant earthquakes include the 1975 Yellowstone Park earthquake, with a magnitude of 6.1. This quake caused minor damage to park infrastructure and further illustrated the park's seismic volatility. Like the Hebgen Lake event, this earthquake also affected the park's hydrothermal systems, causing geysers to erupt more frequently and altering the flow of hot springs. In understanding Yellowstone's seismic history, it is crucial to consider the broader geological context. The Yellowstone caldera, a supervolcano, has experienced three massive eruptions in the past 2.1 million years, each of which significantly reshaped the region. The most recent of these, approximately 640,000 years ago, created the current caldera. While these super eruptions are infrequent, the volcanic and tectonic processes that drive them continue to influence the area's seismic activity. The movement of magma beneath the caldera generates earthquakes, both large and small, contributing to the park's ongoing geological dynamism. Scientific monitoring of Yellowstone's seismic activity has significantly advanced over the years. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, continuously monitors earthquakes and other geological phenomena, providing valuable data to scientists and the public. 
This continuous monitoring is vital for early detection of potential hazards, including significant earthquakes and volcanic activity. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, plays a central role in monitoring the park's seismic and geothermal activity. Established in 2001, YVO is a collaborative effort involving the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, Yellowstone National Park, the University of Utah, and other partners. YVO uses a network of advanced instruments to monitor seismicity, ground deformation, and hydrothermal activity in real time. This comprehensive monitoring system includes seismographs, GPS stations, and temperature sensors, providing critical data for detecting changes in the park's subsurface activity. Seismic monitoring in Yellowstone is particularly important given the park's frequent earthquake swarms. Seismographs distributed throughout the region detect and record even the smallest tremors, enabling scientists to identify patterns and potential precursors to larger seismic events. These instruments have recorded thousands of earthquakes annually, most of which are small and not felt by visitors. However, by analyzing these data, scientists can track the movement of magma and other geological processes occurring beneath the surface. Ground deformation monitoring is another key aspect of YVO's efforts. The Yellowstone caldera undergoes periods of uplift and subsidence, indicative of magma movement and pressure changes within the volcanic system. GPS stations and INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar Technology, measure ground deformation with high precision, helping scientists understand the magmatic processes driving these movements. For instance, Significant uplift detected between 2004 and 2010 was closely monitored, revealing valuable insights into the behavior of the caldera's magma reservoir. Hydrothermal monitoring focuses on Yellowstone's famous geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles. These features are directly influenced by the geothermal activity beneath the park. Temperature sensors and water chemistry analyses help scientists track changes in these features, which can sometimes signal increased geothermal activity or changes in the underground plumbing system. For example, sudden changes in geyser eruption patterns or hot spring temperatures can provide early warnings of potential volcanic unrest. Despite the advanced monitoring systems in place, predicting volcanic eruptions and large earthquakes with precise timing remains challenging. However, the continuous collection and analysis of data improve the ability to identify signs of increasing volcanic or seismic activity. For instance, the detection of earthquake swarms, accelerated ground deformation, and significant changes in geothermal features could collectively indicate an elevated risk of volcanic eruption. In such cases, YVO would issue warnings and work with emergency management agencies to ensure public safety. Public communication and education are also vital components of YVO's mission. The observatory regularly updates the public on Yellowstone's geothermal and seismic activity through its website, social media, and annual reports. This transparency helps alleviate public concern and fosters a better understanding of the natural processes at work in the park. In times of heightened activity, Timely and accurate information dissemination becomes crucial for managing public response and preparedness. Risk Yellowstone National Park, renowned for its stunning geothermal features and abundant wildlife, also harbors significant geological risks. The park sits atop the Yellowstone Caldera, an active volcanic system capable of producing substantial seismic and geothermal activity. Understanding the risks and taking appropriate precautions are vital for ensuring the safety of visitors, residents, and the environment. Yellowstone is one of the most seismically active regions in the United States, experiencing thousands of small earthquakes each year. While most of these are too minor to be felt, they indicate ongoing geological processes. More concerning are earthquake swarms, which involve numerous quakes in a short period and can sometimes precede larger seismic events. A major earthquake in Yellowstone could cause landslides, damage infrastructure, and pose a direct threat to human safety. The Yellowstone caldera has experienced three super eruptions in the past 2.1 million years, with the last occurring approximately 640,000 years ago. Although the likelihood of another super eruption in the near future is low, it remains a potential risk. Such an event would have catastrophic global consequences, 
including massive ashfall, climate changes, and widespread destruction. More plausible are smaller yet still significant hydrothermal explosions or localized volcanic eruptions. These could disrupt travel, damage ecosystems, and threaten lives. Yellowstone's geysers, hot springs, and fumaroles, while spectacular, are also hazardous. Boiling water and steam can cause severe burns, and the thin crust around these features can collapse, leading to injury or death. Every year, visitors are injured by ignoring safety warnings and venturing too close to these geothermal features. Additionally, changes in geothermal activity can sometimes precede more significant geological events, such as earthquakes or eruptions. Precautions. Visitors should stay on designated trails and boardwalks, heed warning signs, and follow the instructions of park rangers. Venturing off trail can be dangerous due to unstable ground and the risk of encountering hazardous geothermal features. In the event of an earthquake, individuals should drop, cover, and hold on to protect themselves from falling debris. Being aware of evacuation routes and emergency procedures is crucial for safety during larger seismic events. Staying informed about the latest geological activity in Yellowstone is essential. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, provides regular updates on seismic and geothermal activity, which can help visitors and residents prepare for potential hazards. Having an emergency kit with essentials like water, food, a flashlight, and a first aid kit is prudent for both visitors and residents. This preparedness can be critical in the event of a sudden geological event. Understanding the nature of Yellowstone's geothermal and seismic hazards can help individuals make informed decisions about their safety. Educational programs and materials provided by the park and scientific organizations can enhance public awareness and preparedness. In short, Yellowstone's breathtaking landscapes and unique geothermal features are a reminder of Earth's powerful geological forces. Yet beneath this beauty lies an active volcanic system with significant risks. Understanding these dangers, from earthquakes and volcanic eruptions to hydrothermal hazards, is crucial for visitor safety and ecosystem health. While the chance of a major eruption soon is low, smaller events like earthquake swarms and hydrothermal explosions still pose serious threats. Effective monitoring and preparedness are key. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, tracks and analyzes seismic and geothermal activities, providing crucial data. Staying informed through YVO updates and following park safety guidelines are essential steps in staying safe. What do you think about Yellowstone's hidden risks? Share your thoughts and let's discuss.